Hi. Very good afternoon to all the students. Hi, everyone. You can see many of you have already joined here. I can see 29. Okay, so basically 26 of you have already here. So for today, uh, we will be uh, doing, we will be keep, uh, continue to discussing about the virtual memory. So hi, is everyone. You fine? So for your uh, test paper, I'm still marking. Uh, it has, hasn't been completed. Hopefully by end of next week, I will be able to give you back the papers. Uh. Yeah, I think until now, I, I still think that okay lah. From what I uh, see until now, so uh, I try to give you back maybe by the end of next week. So uh, another thing is, uh, can you hear my voice clearly? How many people feel? Uh, haven't because I mark one question by one question, so haven't seen yet. So uh, you can hear me clearly, right? Because now I'm using another computer. So if you don't just see me, uh, can you hear me? Uh, let me know. Yeah. Uh, another thing is uh, for next Thursday, uh, tutorial class one to two, uh, because I'm uh, called to go to Malacca, uh, because uh, our Thai UC actually have a consultancy project with Genting Plantation. So I have to go there and see the palm oil tree. Uh. Yeah, so that's why yeah, I also don't want to go actually. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I'm assigned to go. Uh. So uh, for next Thursday, 1 to 2 p.m., so I will need to reschedule the class to another Tuesday. Uh, yeah, another Tuesday. So I, I will, uh, you will see the new, new uh, slot in your timetable soon. Yeah, so I'm going to Malacca. Uh, of course, we have to apply for permit now when we go there. Yeah, so I can see many have already been here. Not a trip, uh, it's a, uh, we go there to see the palm oil tree. And then see whether we can improve their process of uh, harvesting this palm oil. And also various process, there are many, uh, a few lectures, four lectures will go. Yeah, that's why, yeah, if you go Malacca, police will catch you. Yeah, correct, correct. So I can just go directly to the palm oil, uh, oil palm, see the oil palm. Then after that, maybe a, a lunch, at, have lunch at the, at the estate there. After that, I have to go directly go back, uh, come back here. I cannot go to Jungle Street also. Uh, so one way go there, one way go back. Yeah. So don't uh, don't think it's a uh, it's not a trip like that. So basically, uh, for your test paper, I will return to you end of next week uh, Hopefully lah. So I will mark as soon as possible. So any question you have uh, before you start, because for next week, uh, you will be submitting your assignment, right? How is the progress of your assignment? Uh, yeah, any progress? Ah, uh, yeah, Jalim, uh, please ask a question. Yeah, you can turn on your mic if you want. Oh, no, I missed uh, okay. Oh, you just uh, simply click only, right? Yeah, okay. No problem. Uh. Okay, good, Jalim. So I can see many of you have already here. I can see uh, Boon Kyung, Chai Siu, Chi Ye, Chun Wei, Chong Yi, Han Xiang, Heng Dong, Jin Shen, Jin Wen, Dreaming, Ka Xing, uh, Brenda, Kui. Uh, Lok Ching, Mei Lin, uh, Ernest Ng, Ha Tiong Le, Wei Hong, Wen Liang, Xi Pian, Xie Wen, Yan Chang, uh, Yao Ting, uh, Yi Hang, Yong Chuan, Zhu uh, Yu Yang, and Chua Yi Yang, and also Lim Zhe Lin, uh, Chu Jiang Hen. Okay, uh, 27 of you have already been here. Uh, never mind, we can uh, go ahead and do our uh, lectures. Basically, as you can see, uh, we have already completed all the tutorials uh, in our class. So uh, we use the tutorial class for other purposes like uh, doing some revisions and also if we need to, we will do some presentation. So after you have submitted your assignment, I will give you some chance to do some presentation. Yeah, so uh, don't worry. After next week, then uh, we will arrange for that. So now let us Go to the, yeah, go to the uh, lecture notes. Uh, we have talked about this virtual memory for sometimes, maybe an hour, previously, uh, maybe less than an hour. We're talking about this uh, virtual memory. So when we talk about the virtual memory, 
what's the meaning of this virtual memory? That means that this memory is, uh, does not exist. It's something virtual. You just imagine that it exists. Because memory, when we say uh, talk about memory, we are talking about the RAM. Okay, RAM is actually a memory. So this is a read random access memory. Why do we need RAM? Because all the program has to be stay inside the RAM in order for the program to run. If the program is not fetched into the RAM, it could not be run, okay, anytime. So that's why we need the RAM in order to in, uh, we, we need the RAM in order to run a program. So this is the virtual to physical address translation. When we have this virtual uh, memory, it's actually inside the hard disk. Okay, virtual memory is actually inside the hard disk. Uh -huh. So it's not actually a RAM. RAM is over here, but the hard disk is actually uh, here. So when we have virtual memory, it's basically we have the virtual memory at the hard disk. Okay, so we need to map the memory from the virtual memory to our, uh, from the RAM and virtual memory together. Okay, so that's why we have the virtual to physical address translation. So if you like computers, so you must know this uh, virtual memory is something that has been introduced since Windows. Yeah, Windows. Uh, during DOS, uh, usually people don't use uh, virtual memory, uh, this operating system. Uh, last time, uh, we have this DOS. So DOS is this operating system. This DOS, what is the characteristic of this DOS is? Uh, you cannot see any windows. You can see it's just see some prompt over there. So and that DIR, so they'll list out all the <clears throat> file inside this folder. So because of this simplicity of this DOS operate, uh, this operating system or DOS, uh, where you have no windows, so uh, you do not need virtual memory. Because the memory is always enough. You do need to do uh, use, uh, you need to execute a lot of programs. But when Windows is uh, created by Microsoft, uh, they start from Microsoft Windows, uh, start from uh, Windows 1.0, then we have 2.0, and then 3.1, uh, 0, 3.1. Uh, at that time, uh, when you have the, we, when we have this uh, Microsoft Windows, then virtual memory start to be useful because the RAM is not enough to uh, run all the program inside Windows. You can imagine how many programs are there in a window. There are too many programs. There are thousands of programs. All of them keep on using the memories. So your RAM cannot support unless you take a part of your hard disk and virtually make it to become the RAM. So the RAM, uh, originally you have, let's say, one gigabyte. You can extend them to become 16 gigabyte or etc. Okay, so you can actually extend your RAM to a bigger space. So what happened is the part in this hard disk will be assigned to the RAM. So how can it be assigned? Because we have a table. So this table has been, uh, we have been talked about this table uh, previously. So we have the table. Now, where's the table? Yeah, this is the table of the virtual addresses. So this virtual addresses will consist of 0 to 16 giga, for example, gigabyte. So uh, maybe uh, four, uh, one gigabyte will be over here. So from here, you have one gigabyte. But in the hard disk, you have another 15 gigabyte, which is used to store this uh, virtual memory. So this is how the virtual address can be mapped to the physical address. That's why we call all these files inside the hard disk, we call this swap file, swap file. 
Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh. So how do we actually map match this uh, virtual memory to physical memory? So we map like this. We have the page offset. Uh, there will be the same bit for the page offset. Uh, for in this case, two to power twelve uh, bytes, and this one also two to a power twelve bytes, which is four k byte. Okay, four k byte uh, for one offset page, one page. So one page will be equals to four kilobyte. Okay, four kilobyte for one page, but in your virtual address, there are many pages. Yeah, there are many pages. How many pages are there? Two to the power of 22, is it? Uh, 31 minus 12 plus one. So I get 20, 20, 20, no, 20 only, yeah? 31, 20, yeah? Yeah, 31, uh, sorry, yeah? So 20 only, 31 minus 12 equals to 19, right? You have to plus one now because you've got the front and the back, right? So plus one now. So you get 20. So you get two. Uh, two to the power of 20. La. Okay, two mega. La. But it's not mega. La. Actually, it's a two to the power of 20. You have to multiply. Uh, you have to do exponential two to the power of 20. So for the virtual memory, we have said that you can have two to the power of 20. So how many... Uh, how many, what is the size of the virtual address here? The size of the virtual address depends on this. So we have two to the power of 32 bytes of the virtual address. What is this? This is four gigabyte, okay? Four gigabyte. There are four gigabyte of memory inside the virtual addresses. But in the physical addresses, we only have two to the power of 30. From 0, 1 until 29, we have 2 to the power of 30. So you have 1 gigabyte. In this case, we have expanded the size of the virtual memory from the original RAM of 1 gigabyte to 4 gigabyte. We make it to be four times bigger. So that's why uh, we are able to make this RAM bigger using virtual memory. So the address actually broken into one. The virtual page number, uh, which is related to the physical page, and also the page offset is not translated. Lah. The page offset is determined the page size. In this case, we have a four kilobyte. Okay. So, for example, in this virtual address, we have four gigabyte of memory, but in our RAM. Our 60 RAM or our uh, DRAM, so we only have 2 to the power 30, which is 1 gigabyte of the RAM, where the page size we, uh, is actually exactly the same. So we need to map this virtual page number into the physical page number. So, how do you map a bigger thing to a smaller thing? Uh, which means that you truly, truly, uh, that means, uh, 75% of it does not exist in the RAM. But assume that it exists, but you did not store it in the RAM, you store it in the hard disk. Uh, when, when the computer come to check, then only you uh, go and take those uh, 75% and put it into the RAM and they take out some and then put back to the hard disk. So this is how virtual memory work, okay? So the page size here is actually two to the power of 12 address, which is four kilobyte. Okay, so the physical address only has two to the power 18, uh, which is two, five, six pages. Uh. So there's only two, five, six pages over here. But there are, uh, there are more than this inside here. Okay, so what's your page is two to the power 20. This 20 page, uh, 20 bits is used to represent the 1024k pages. So there are four times more pages than the uh, actual RAM. So this is called virtual, uh, virtual memory. Yeah. So for example, uh, currently in this world, there are many virtual things, right? Uh, some people might think that uh, 
some virtual thing is real, but actually it's not. Lah. For example, uh, we have some virtual things like, uh, do you know a little bit about a technology called uh, blockchain? Uh, it's in uh, computer science. Basically, that blockchain technology has been used to implement something called Bitcoin. And this Bitcoin doesn't actually doesn't exist. But people think that it exists. Lah. So that's why, yeah. It actually doesn't exist, lah, okay? So it's uh, something mapped outside of the world, lah, okay? Uh? So it's not there, lah, so yeah. So must be careful lah, with something not there. So it's just some mapping between that. Okay, so how do you pitch, uh, placing a pitch? So you have a pitch in the size of four kilo by. You have this pitch, but how do you place it? You only have two places to, uh, to place it. First, you can place it at the hard disk ah so you can place uh place this at the hard disk or because at the artist we have a swap files okay this is the first place you can place if it's not used uh it's not uh, directly used so second place you can place is actually your ram you can place it at the ram so how do you know whether you place it at the ram or hard disk that's why you need a page table. Page table will tell you where you map uh, the virtual page into. So you have to uh, have some address here, right? So only then you can tell where to paste, uh, where, where did you place the page. So pages are indexed with a page table, which resides in memory. So this uh, page table actually is inside memory to tell you where your page is. Okay, let's say if you want to find a page of uh, 4K, so the computer will tell you it's actually in the hard disk or in the RAM. Okay, if actually in the hard disk, so you have to call, uh, do the, you have to call the hard disk to transfer the data to the RAM. But it's actually inside the RAM, so you do not need to do it. You just directly access it. So uh, the page table is indexed with the page number from the virtual address and contain the physical page number. Okay, the page number from the virtual address and also contain the uh, physical page number. So physical page number is all over here, all the uh, physical page number. It may contain entry for pages not present in memory. As I said, only one gigabyte is over here from our example just now, and three gigabyte actually in hard disk. So it may contain the entry for pages not present in memory. So the operating system, especially the Windows, uh, the virtual memory started when Windows has been invented. Previously, uh, seldom got people use it, uh -huh. but uh, not, not, not very, uh, not widely used. Uh. So only after Windows has been created, people think about doing multiple tasks, multiple tasking, multiple things together at one time. Because people uh, want to uh, produce more things. So they ask people to, uh, they ask computer to do multiple programs at one time. So that's why computer also need a lot of memories to do so. Uh, previously in DOS operating system, you only can do one thing at one time. Yeah, you have to. Terminate a program before you can run another program. Yeah. Uh, Unix, they can do multitasking, firstly, but DOS uh, usually cannot unless you have a special, you design a special program for it. So, operating system can choose to replace any page when the main memory is full. So, when you have something that you want to put from your hard disk to your RAM, so this information has to swap back to your swap file in the hard disk. So usually the least recently used algorithm uh, is used. So if let's say this thing has not been used for uh, one, uh, one hour, okay, one hour or many times. So we will take this one first, okay? So meaning that if it does not use, uh, nobody use it means it's not useful at all, right? Uh, usually it won't be used anymore. Uh, this is what is the, uh, this is the principle behind. So when you page the, uh, placing a page of the virtual memory, you can place it either at your RAM or 
inside the swap file of your disk uh, swap files here at your hard disk uh, swap file over here at your hard disk so the page number actually map each page in virtual memory to a page in main memory uh -huh. so and a page store on the disk that means if you store one gig of all this page here and also store all inside the swap here so basically uh these are three gate will be stored at the swap file over here meaning all of these addresses will be stored over here but you have a extra bit over here just to tell whether your data this address is actually in the physical memory or inside the disk storage so this is what uh, is required to put at the uh, page table so everyone must know this page table and you want to do the uh, virtual memory page table is very important because it tells you whether your page is actually inside a hard disk or inside the swap file yeah swap file so uh actually when you use your windows also there will have if you go to setting you can also set the number of swap files the size of the swap files that you can actually use for your windows okay so this is how it works up yeah. so we have the page table so this is a very special table which is go uh, is used to map to the ram and also your hard disk swap file so this is the structure of a page table we have a valid bit as the first bit and also we have the physical page number uh, at the second column okay second column here so the page number here so it refer to the physical page number and also they re refer to the page offset so when the computer want to look for a memory inside the RAM computer, let's say computer want to look for this. So if we go to detect whether this one exists in the RAM, it exists in the RAM, it will go to take the RAM, uh, take out from the RAM. If it does not exist in the RAM, then we will transfer from the hard disk to the main memory. So this is how it works. So previously we have the uh, cache, right? And then the cache, we have the main memory we say that uh when we have the page fault uh, not page fault we have the fault lah. okay so we have to transfer from the cache to the memory in memory then now we have another label we call it virtual memory virtual memory is very big but it's lower because uh, they are using hard disk but right now uh people uh, the hard disk that people actually using now uh, for your information uh, some still using hard disk, uh, but some already use SSD. Uh, uh, solid, uh, static, solid uh, drive, uh, solid state drive. Uh, okay, so this solid state drive actually is uh, actually using the technology of this RAM, uh, uh, almost like the RAM. Uh. So the hard disk also looks like a RAM, so that's why it's very fast. Uh, for example, let's say if you buy if you buy a computer with SSD. Uh, maybe when you turn on the computer, it will boot up within 10 seconds, then you can directly do your things. Uh, but if you use hard disk, then you, it may take you a few minutes uh, to run and then only you can get it. So that is the advantage of the SSD. Uh, and also, because now the virtual memory also placed on the SSD already. If you have a SSD, hard disk. Okay? But SSD is very expensive compared to the hard disk. So that's why um, there are still many computers actually using a uh, normal hard disk. And so some computers actually have some hard disk, some SSD. Yeah. So uh, this is about the page table. Page table <clears throat> in the memory, location in the memory pointed by page table register. Okay. So location in the memory. Uh, we have a page table register. This Page table register actually store the location of the page table inside the memory, inside the RAM. So page table assume in a fixed and contiguous area of memory. 
That's why you also have to put a particular place inside the RAM to store this virtual memory. So the page number has very two very important thing, uh, important parts. The first part is actually a valid P. A valid P is a one bit one, means that it exists inside the RAM, and zero means that it exists inside the hard disk. So indicate if a page is present or absent from memory. So page table contain mapping for every virtual page. Yeah, because we have four gigabyte of the virtual memory. So everything here has to be mapped with a page table inside the RAM. So no text is required. Page size is actually two to the power of 12 because we have four kilobyte page. Every time you get a page, you have to get the four kilobyte. So virtual address is a uh, four gate. Yeah. And the page table entries needed is uh, 20 bits, which is one million, which one mega, one mega entries. One meg entries. Uh. So that means if you, you, you need a lot of space, uh, maybe a few hundred max uh, in order to store this page, uh, page table, uh, the page table. Okay. So uh, we are next, we are going to talk about a page fault. A page fault occur. What is the meaning of page fault? It's not because of uh, something faulty inside a computer. Uh, no, uh. it's because page fault happen when your page is not in RAM. Uh. It's not in RAM. If it's not in RAM, means it's in the soft file in your hard disk. So it's in the soft file. So occurs when the page is not in the main memory. So what happens is you have to transfer the page from the main memory to the hard disk. So you have the hard disk over here. Uh, you have to transfer to the main memory. Hard disk, you go to the main memory. So we have to copy the page, copy page. So that's why the huge page fault to copy the page from the hard disk to the main memory too often will lead to several decisions. Okay, let's say if you have a very uh, huge page fault, so you have a penalty. So what you should think of is that the page should be large enough so that uh, you can make it from 4 KB to 16 kilobyte. So when you make your page to be bigger, so maybe, maybe only that you will not have a page fault, but sometimes you still have a page fault. Maybe because the thing that the thing that uh, the computer want to access is actually in a contiguous way. So maybe if you let your page to be bigger, so the computer can access everything one uh, at one time. So organizations, uh, computer organizations, uh, that reduce page fault rate are attractive. So me, maybe they will use a fully associative placement of page. Okay, uh, later we'll see about it. And then the page fault can be handled in software uh, since the overhead is small compared to this access time. So let's say if you have any page fault, so you can uh, design your software so that it only access the data inside your RAM. It doesn't access the data inside the, uh, inside the software. So or it used, using the right through, it's too long. Yeah, right through takes so long. Why is right through? Right through means everything you, uh, you compare here. Let's say yeah, this hard disk and also the RAM. Uh, now you know this is hard disk already. This is RAM. Uh, anything I write here, one. Here also must be changed to one. If I change this to zero, this one also have to change to zero. So this is called right true so everything written here has to be directly right here written here or later you use the right back right back maybe a, li a little bit uh easier uh, uh may maybe not so frequently used uh, okay right back later so when a page fault occurs means the valid bit is not set so what happened in your page table the valid bit is not set so the operating system like Windows or Ubuntu or other types of operating system like your, or maybe some of you actually using Apple, yeah, Apple OS. Uh, so uh, OS have to find page in next level of hierarchy. 
usually the hard disk and place the page in the main memory. So OS must keep track of the pages location on this with a table recording uh, in the disk location of each virtual page and table track with program which use uh, which virtual page. So OS operating system can handle this page for uh, more efficiently. So if all physical pages use, OS must replace a page, meaning that if your RAM has been fully used, this RAM fully used. So in order to transfer one hard disk, uh, the page to here. So this one must be put back to this sub file, right? Yeah. So yeah, OS must replace. So a common scheme is least recently used. Uh, who is uh, which data is not useful, so they just stick up and then store it back to hard disk. Yeah. So replace uh, replace the page return to this and new page read from it. So this is called the page swapping process. Swap page from the hard disk and also RAM, etc. So also uh, beside the page swap, we also have the page read. How do you do the page read? Page read means when you have one page being written at the virtual memory and also the RAM. So how do you actually synchronize them? Okay, the write through actually is in practical, meaning that everything you write to the uh, virtual memory, you directly have to go to the RAM and then write it back. Yeah, if let's say one bit there, a problem uh, changed already, so one bit must be changed here. So it costs a lot of uh, time, right? So usually they will use the write back. So they write the page, uh, write to the page in the main memory. The page in the secondary storage only updated when the page is replaced. So if you don't use it, you don't do the write. You don't write it. So that's why you have a one bit extra bit for the page table. Now, previously, we have a page table. Uh, we are happy, right? It's very simple. So here we have the address. Here is the address. And we want to know whether this address is valid or not. Valid means it's in the RAM. Now, the people suggesting to put one more bit over here. What bit? 30 bit. Yeah. So this 30 bit is to tell computer if let's say put one over here. Oh, it's 30 already. So whenever next time you want to do anything to, to, the, uh, to this uh, address, you must write it back first, write back first. So it said when the page is written, send anything you write here, uh, 30, so you have to uh, do the 30 job first. Huh? You have to clean it up first so that the data has been synchronized between hard disk and also virtual memory. So these are some of the methods that I use. Besides, uh, I'm going to talk about a very important thing, which is a translation, look aside buffer. So the computer uh, designer think that virtual memory is too slow. So what they want is they create something called translation, look aside buffer. It's a cache, special cache that keep track of the recently used translation, which means that this uh, translation look aside buffer is actually a cache. Uh, whenever uh, the computer need to access it, they will go to see whether this TLB translation look aside buffer has the data that it needs. If it have this data, so it will not uh, try to, uh, they will just access from there. Lah. Translation look aside buffer. Okay. So it's the key to improve access performance is to rely on locality. Eh? So the TLB is very local compared to the virtual memory. This virtual memory sometimes uh, is actually inside the hard disk. So it's very slow. So this TLB is very near to the main memory and also the cache. Yeah, so that's why they have the translation look aside hey, uh, buffer. So this is the translation look aside buffer. You hold the subset of page table mapping. It's a, uh, because the page table is very big. Uh. So this one page table very big. Uh. For example, uh, let's say at home, uh, yeah, you go and read your, yeah, let's say you read my, my, my lectures. Uh. So see, a lot. Uh. Yeah, too many things inside my lecture notes. 
You feel that it's already exam time. You want to do it faster, so you go and uh, take take a note from your friends. Ah, uh, just read the notes, right? So this is the same concept used for this look aside buffer. Look aside buffer translation look aside buffer actually store a partial partial uh, a portion of your table. So in this case, the table consists of a few hundred megabytes, right? So your look aside table may be very small, uh, just a few megabytes. So just look at that table. Uh, okay, yeah, get get the uh, what uh, the the data that you need. So do not need to go to the virtual memory uh, page table to get your data, to get the address and also data. So I directly go to the translation look aside buffer. So it will store the valid bit tag and also the physical page address. So in this way, you will be able to have a smaller table. Uh, so they don't want to read a very uh, very lengthy book. So they want to read uh, uh, some notes. Uh -huh. Yes, that's why they use the translation look aside buffer. So an every access, so the computer, you first look into this TLB. So only TLB will be looked at at first. If a hit occur, so this number, physical page number is already obtained. So I directly get the data from the virtual memory or hard disk. If a miss occur, uh, let's say if TLB miss, so the page has this in the page table. So they go to check the page table. So if the page say that the page is not the memory in the memory, so it has to go to the virtual memory inside the swap file to get this. So the OS invoke to handle fault with an exception. So first you go to see a small table after uh, TLB. After that, you go to see the page table. Uh, then if page table also say it's not there, so you have to go to the swap file and get it and then copy to the to the RAM. Okay, so this is how it works. So after TLB miss, so one TLB entry is replaced. Uh, once this is missed, so you have to uh, have to copy la. This time you become clever a little bit, right? It's missed, right? So pick the one that is uh, important that I put into TLB. Yeah. So only reference and 30 bit of the TLB translation look aside buffer for the virtual memory will be replaced, copy back to the page table. So typically, the TLB parameter is only 4,000, 32 to 4,000 entries. Uh, the block size is one to two page table entries. Uh -huh. So the heat time uh, for the TLB is uh, one clock cycles only, la, around one clock cycles. And miss penalty, yeah. let's say if you can't find it in TLB, so you have to go to 10 to 30 clock cycles from your page table. After that, miss rate will be uh, 0 0.01%. Uh, 1 yeah, this, so this is the TLB uh, specification. So this is actually the architecture for a mixed processor. A mixed processor is actually a very, very, uh, very old processor, but we need to study because it's a very famous computer that every computer architect uh, students will need to study this. So if you don't study this, means you are not computer architect students. Uh, so you have to study this MIPS. Uh. So the MIPS R2000 trans look, uh, translation look aside buffer uh, because uh, they use a reduced instruction set computer instruction set architecture, ISA. Okay. So tran translation look aside uh, buffer is fully associative. Uh, fully associative. Uh, this one we are not going to uh, go very deep. Uh. But it's a fully associative. Yeah. So uh, if valid bit set, so the TLB hit. So the page number and the page offset forms index used to assess the cache. And cache is direct map for the MIPS R2000 TLB. So this is actually the, the TLB for this uh, MIPS R2000. So this is actually a flow chart for the MI, uh, MIPS R2000 TLB, the virtual address, they go to find TLB first, okay? So they go and check their notes, ah. Uh. Uh, got note, what got or not? I know, ah. Uh. Then only they go and read, flip the books, right? Yeah, go and flip the books. Uh, and only then, only uh, one by one, TLB, 
If no, then uh, it's a session. If hit, then they see whether it's right or not. Uh, if not, then they go to the uh, cache. Yeah, and then write access bit on. Then they assess the right data into a cache. Okay, uh, for, for different operation. Uh, if right, yes, then you write. If no, then you have to see whether it's uh, 30 or not. 30, then you have to do something. So this is about the mix. R2000, translation look aside buffer for virtual memory. So this is the last page of these lectures. Basically, our virtual memory is uh, compared to the cache. What is the uh, specification? So the size of the L1 cache is actually very small, 16 bytes. But for virtual memory, there is very, very big 4 kilobyte to 64 kilobyte. The one block is 64 kilobyte to 64 kilobyte. The heat time for the cache is actually one to two seconds, very, very fast. But for memory, virtual memory, it takes 40 to 100 cycles because you need to go to C, TLB, uh, go to C, page table. Page table have a problem, they go to C, hard disk. Uh, also, hard disk sometimes busy, right? Some other application is using it. So always for problem one. So, but cache, no problem, right? Uh, they just need one to two cycle. If busy, then next time they will give you, okay? So the missed penalty is eight to 100 cycles. Let's say anything happen, you have the fault there. So you have to wait for another eight to 100 cycles instead of one to two. However, for the virtual memory, if there is a fault inside the page table, wow, very, very troublesome. You have to spend 700,000 cycles to go to Hadis. Yeah, because Hadis is very far away, right? Go to communicate, send some protocol, uh, check whether, check this, check that. Uh. 700,000 cycles. Wow. Wasting a lot of times, right? That's why uh, people now, now today, they want to use the SSD because they want to reduce this time. And the miss rate for the L1 cache is actually 10%, uh, 0 to 0.5% to 10%. Whereas for virtual memory, very, very seldom got the miss rate. Why? Because the whole page is very big, 4 key, uh, kilobyte or 64 kilobyte, very big. And the size for the cache usually very small until 1 meg. But for virtual memory, it can go until 8 gig. So this is about the virtual memory. Yeah. So uh, actually, you can actually set your setting for your virtual memory, I think you can sell it uh, using your computer. You can search your uh, virtual memory, virtual memory, and you can actually set it. But usually we don't need to set it. Why? Because it's already, uh, uh, yeah. So it, virtual memory, yeah, they have the page there. So you can actually search the page uh, virtual memory over here. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can actually search over here. Everything you can go and find the setting. Uh, where is the setting? Every uh, go and check the setting. Uh, so all these settings are uh, you can actually set your virtual memory. I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to uh, share, but you can actually look at it. Uh. Yeah, uh, storage spaces. Yeah, okay, show more category. So these are all the things you can actually check and then uh, you, if you want to change this, uh, sometimes they don't allow us to change that. Uh, yeah. So let's see, uh, manage storage space, etc. So uh, you can actually change from here. Uh, sometime, uh, last time I changed already, so you can search your setting over here. Yeah. So virtual memory setting. Yeah. Okay, so any question you have? Anything you want to ask me? Uh, because we already finished this uh, virtual memory, we still have two more chapters. Storage. Next time I will talk about hard disk, floppy disk, CD-ROM, pen drive, etc. Then the last one we will talk about input output your keyboard, your mouse, uh, your camera, etc. So these are all the things that is left uh, beside the virtual memory. Yes, when you uh, learn about this computer, so you must know the architecture, right, of a computer. Now you know, after this class, you know there is a TLB. Uh, previously, if people tell, uh, ask you what is the translation load aside buffer, you don't know, right? Uh, now you know. Uh, so uh, that's why we need to know this. Uh, 
in terms of design, you need to know the IC design. So you need to know the 60 uh, design and one T, one, one uh, cash, one C design. So let me see uh, what, how many people feel no people. I hope no people feel like uh, yelling. Uh. So, okay. Yeah, police will catch you. Uh, but I heard that they are going to open. They're they are considering, right? The, the government is considering. So, uh, yeah. So don't uh, just wait for a while. Uh. Yeah, since you are staying with family, most of you. So don't worry. So uh, any question you have before we end our class today? So uh, for your information, next Thursday, we don't have tutorial class uh, for group group B, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, we don't have tutorial class. I have replaced it to the next Tuesday, five to six. Uh, yeah. So for Tuesday, uh, if I, we have anything missed class from the lectures, so I will put it at the Tuesday afternoon because you say you are free, right? During that time. So I try to put over there. I didn't put other places. Uh. Yeah. So uh, next end of next week, I will try to distribute your exam paper. And then for next week, uh, please do your assignment. Uh. I hope you have finished your assignment. After that, please present a little bit, uh, starting from week 11. So I'll locate some time for you to do some presentation. Uh. Yeah. So any problem you have about your assignment? You ask me now. If not, then we can end our class. Any question, Bunkia? I see you. Chie. Any question, Chie? Uh, Chunwei? Chongyi? Anyone? Uh, no, sir. Uh, no, uh, Chie, no question. Uh. So yeah. your report is in group report. Uh. So after next week, next Friday, can you submit? Uh? Are you okay or not? Or, or you need a little bit, a few days more? You can let me know. Uh. Is it okay? Okay, you try first. Uh, next Friday, if you cannot, then you need to let me know. This if I stand, uh, then you will wait until the last minute also, right? Better you do first. Uh. So next Friday, by, by midnight, uh, midnight. Yeah, midnight, then you submit. Uh. Yeah, like that. So if no question, then you're allowed to leave. Thank you very much. So see you next week. Um, Sir, so for the originality yeah. or the need to turn it in or something uh yeah i will create a account for you to turn it in by next friday lo. yeah okay all right okay thank you uh, sir below below 25 percent ah. yeah thank you Chie. Oh, okay. okay below 25 percent. i haven't created the link yet because i don't expect you to submit yet ah. oh, okay. next, next week next week ah. next week we will have yeah friday lah you can submit and then yeah before that lah, I will give you a turn in assess by, by Wednesday. So thank you very much, Hang Dong and everyone. So if no question, then you may leave now. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you.